Hello from Ray here, LG G6 and the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Both are simply a joy to look at, and both features an infinity edge display, water-end resistance, and it's got some amazing optics. Which is the better pick? Let's find out. You're right, the regular smaller S8 would be the closer direct competitor to the G6, but the crazy 83% screen-to-body ratio on the S8 Plus has increased a massive 6.2 inches display onto a one-hand manageable form factor. It's actually almost as slim as the G6, just a bit taller. Of course, it has to do with the even wider 18.5 by 9 ratio, and the curved display with almost no bezels on all the four sides. The curved, futuristic design on the S8 Plus is undeniably one of the best looking phones on the planet, and it also gives a really smooth, seamless glass loop texture in hands. It is a more mature, sophisticated piece of artwork compared to the G6, without a doubt. Speaking of the G6, it's got a boxy design, with sharp edges all over the chassis. It's not necessarily bad, you might treasure those flat surfaces on the sides, as they give better grip but also an obvious gap between the frame and the display panel itself. When it comes to delicacy and elegance, the level of craftsmanship is kind of 2016 or maybe even 2015-ish. Still, we have to give LG some applause for trying some new materials and designs. However, things become much more delicate on the S8. The curved glass melts into the metal frame seamlessly smooth, and even the metal frames curved and polished. It completes the glass loop texture and feels like nothing else on the market. Moving on to the hardware, we are getting microSD expansion on both of them. NFC chips also a must on flagships like these. Android Pay is simply the best invention on earth. Meanwhile, the S8 shines when it comes to wireless charging. You will get that on the G6 in America as well, but I personally prefer the quad deck variant, which is the one here. The S8 is also the only one here that packs an LED notification light. Interesting. Unfortunately, thanks to the ridiculous placement of the fingerprint sensor, there are altogether six ways to just unlock the screen. One works really well for people who don't wear glasses, and the other one works only under good lighting conditions. So none of them's gonna replace the fingerprint sensor? Feel free to watch my full review to learn more. The microphones on the S8, however, continues to be one of the best out there, with stereo recording support. The microphones on the G6 is definitely another surprise, same as the V20, full of features, and it supports also the left channel and the right channel. The 3.5mm headphone jack though is a massive, huge key feature of the quad deck variant of the G6, more on that later. Generally speaking, the G6 well built and the metal and glass combination is absolutely a joy to both look at and hold it in hands. But the S8 Plus simply blows everything else away on the market when it comes to the build quality and the design. Apart from the design, the features and performance are probably you guys' major concern. Now, despite they both run Android 7.0, the user interface are nothing close to stock Android. They also tend to stutter and lack a little bit more compared to the flawless stock Android launcher. Anyway, those handy Android 7.0 integrated features including multi-window and notification preview on the notification shade are also here on both of them. Always on display is also here on the G6, despite the LCD backlight IPS panel. However, in terms of usability, the S8 has taken the edge once again. By double tapping the icons on the always on display, it will jump right into the app automatically, but not on the G6. But knock out and double tap to wake and sleep are something that I really miss while daily driving the S8, or other phones. The S8 on the other hand is more features packed without a doubt, but some of them are here for no reason, like the edge display. But the GIF recording feature simply takes video sharing across different platforms easier than ever. Scroll capture also makes web pages or scrollable content sharing much easier on the S8. One-hand operation mode also works better on the S8. 
So it's safe to say the S8's got a more well thought out interface compared to the G6. It becomes even more obvious if you watch YouTube, Amazon Prime, Netflix videos, or even on the stock video player a lot. On the S8, you just tap the crop button right on the bottom right corner of the screen, and it will give you a seamless full screen infinity display experience. Put it right next to the G6, 21x9 movies playback on the G6 basically ridiculous, leaving all the four sides unfilled with black bars. The actual used screen size much larger on the S8 Plus. But that's for videos playback. The G6 actually got a really similar app scaling feature designed for games and other apps. Apps compatibility is more or less the same as the S8. Speaking of the S8, the game centers once again proven the software advancement on Samsung's offer. Switch between performance and battery saving mode, and even disable the pressure sensitive home button during gameplay. That can save lives. Yep, the hidden pressure sensitive home button there permanently, like a hardware one. Smart. So the S8 is undoubtedly the more feature packed option out of the two. The question is, would you need that? Without all those features which can be seen as bloatware as well, the closer to stock Android like G6 will get you out of the day without any compromises. The performance though, the Snapdragon 821 actually holds up really well in day-to-day -day media consumption, even in gaming. So for light tabs you can barely tell the difference in speed at all. But yeah, the S8 is faster, a little bit, slightly, marginally. The gaps become much greater when it comes to large apps and games launching. The S8 is faster, but not by much. Just one or two seconds. This time around, the S8 managed to widen the gap to 3 seconds, launching Dynasty Warriors. It's more than noticeable and could be a deal breaker for some people. But hey, 3 seconds, not a decision making difference, at least for me. So the G6 launches games almost as speedy as the S8, and it handles them really great. The Adreno 530 GPU is not outdated yet for sure. But if you are looking for future proof, then the S8 can see better. Speaking of the S8, the latest update seems to have alleviated the RAM management issue that I've reported on the full review. Yep, Dynasty Row is still running on the background. While according to the standard app's opening speed test, the S8 is further proven to be seconds faster than the G6. But at the end of the day, both of them delivered 2016 flagship performance. So the S8 does specs newer and supposed to be better hardware but in reality, they performed really close. Time to check out the cameras. We are comparing two lenses to one. Whether it's fair or not, the S8 packs a much more technically advanced sensor. With 12 megapixels, an f1.7 aperture and pixel size measured at 1.4 micron. The G6, on the contrary, ships with an outdated Sony IMX258 sensor, with a megapixels count at 13 megapixels. An f1.8 aperture, but pixel size limited at 1.12 micron. At the same time, the S8 spec withdrew pixel technology, focusing speed second to nothing, even indoor with poor lighting. On the G6, however, the lenses move forward and backwards to search for the right spot. It will probably miss your precious moment playing with your kids or dogs. The G6 got a better 18x9 friendly camera app though. The idea of splitting the screen in half and putting the most recently taken picture right in front of our eyes is something we won't see on the S8. Same for the camera roll preview. And don't forget the full manual mode for not only photo shooting, but also video capturing on the G6. All the shutter speed, ISO and white balance are programmable. But the main focus of the G6 camera is definitely the also 13 megapixels wide angle lens. If you travel a lot, you are going to treasure the 125 degrees field of view on the G6. While the image quality out of this updated sensor is far better than the old one. First of all, distortion is gone. Details remain crisp and clear, even on the edges. They've done a really great job here. Distortion is a common trade-off for wide-angle lens, even on DSLR. But not here. The dynamic range, contrast, and color saturation are also right on point. 
It's also worth a mention that the two lenses now work together much better than its predecessor. In video lens switching still noticeable, but much smoother and less awkward compared to the V20. The S8 Plus on the other hand captures the night, or in this case the magic hour, smoother, more saturated, brighter and sharper than probably all phones we've used. Dynamic range is also perfect, is simply the best smartphone for low-light photography. Stay tuned for a full view of the HTC U11 and see how it competes to that. Video quality is also breathtaking. It doesn't have those fancy geeky settings or the ISO shutter speed can only be controlled automatically. But yet it nailed it in every single aspect. It shoots 4K with saturated colors and impressive dynamic range the front-facing camera also delivers identically sharp and saturated videos in Quad HD resolution. You won't be disappointed. Speaking of the front camera, the S8's got autofocus, which the G6 lacks. Under good lighting, both of them give top-notch clarity. But on the S8, the background is actually slightly blurred naturally, thanks to the wider aperture and autofocus. The dynamic range is also slightly wider on the S8, but not by a huge margin. Low light performance on the front is also better on the S8, thanks to the wider f1.7 aperture. It's basically brighter with much more details and far less digital noise and artifact. Or check out the main camera. The G6 might look outdated on papers, but in reality the image quality is not bad at all. Dynamic range is actually comparable to the S8 most of the time. While under broad daylight, the noticeable but moderate sharpening effect actually contributes to the sharper and crisper look of the images. The white balance, however, is much warmer on the S8, with a reddish tint. It's more pleasing to the eyes, but the G6 stays true to the actual environment. Again, not much a difference in terms of clarity. Contrast is also more or less the same. So generally speaking, if you are looking for the absolute sharper camera out of the two, you will be disappointed. Instead, they give identically sharp images with totally different style of image processing. Which is the winner? It depends on personal preference. But the G6 captures a much wider field of view, which takes smartphone photography to a whole new level. Low light performance, however, is a whole new story. But most of the time, the technically outdated G6 holds up really well. Not only does it give bright images, but also with great details and respectable noise level. It's actually on a par with the S8. Now time for the S8 to shine. As the sun goes further, the S8 is blown the G6 away. In this particular shot, the sharpness on the image taken with the S8 is miles ahead of the one taken with the G6. The S8 is once again proven its superior low-light performance. The shadows on the S8 is much brighter, but it's also managed to maintain way more details. And when it comes to genuine night photography, the G6 tends to give a reddish tint on every single shot with similar lighting condition to this. The S8 Plus captured this spectacular view with a much more accurate white balance. But still, in terms of clarity and sharpness, the G6 performed really, really unexpectedly great. Unfortunately, if we move away from those city lines, image quality on the G6 shrinks. Noise levels become unacceptable in the shadows, while the highlights on the background were overexposed. Multimedia experience an interesting part. First and foremost, the display. You guys might have already noticed that there's no need for comparison here. If you do think your life would be easier sticking with those flat IPS displays, go for the G6. But don't get me wrong, the display on the S8 is gorgeous. Those punchy colors, inky deep black with no light bleeding at all, no matter how you tilt the screen. And that 83% screen to body ratio and HDR premium support. While the G6 got an ordinary LCD backlight IPS display. But this time around, LG did give it Dolby Vision support for the extra wide color gamut and HDR10 for high dynamic range content. It's been more than a month since I first met the G6. The overall impression on the displays the arguable greenish-white balance. 
but I really enjoyed those natural colors, and you know, I don't have to worry about getting burned in on this IPS display, and there's no red screen issue at all on the G6. Yep, you can return and get a new one until you've got a perfect S8. But this one is the third one I've unboxed. Finally, a perfect one, but the process kinda annoying and driving me crazy. Another good news for G6 supporters. The quad deck variant here really shines when it comes to headphone audio output quality. Everything sounds crisp and clear, with 75 distinct level of volume. The soundstage is the absolute widest I've heard from a smartphone. The G6 is a phone for people who appreciate music, seriously. The S8 Plus also drives my XBA A3 just fine, but the jaw-dropping clarity and soundstage cannot be found here. And by the way, unfortunately, both the S8 Plus and the G6 pack only a single down-driving speaker on the bottom side. What a shame. Last but again, one of the most essential parts of the review, the battery life. The S8 Plus is expected to be the better performer here, as it's powered by a more advanced 10 nanometer processor with a larger 3500 mAh battery. So according to the first round of the battery life test, after 4 hours of YouTube videos playback, the G6 performed surprisingly close to the S8 Plus, with its 3300 mAh battery. But if you think you won't be playing videos all day, with a maximum screen brightness anyway, then the second round of the test based on 50% screen brightness. And after an hour of YouTube videos playback, another hour of Facebook surfing, and an hour of Clash Royale gameplay, Altogether, 3 hours of media consumption. 66% of the battery was left, compared to 59 on the S8 Plus, which is great. With quick charge 3.0 support, the G6 also charges up quicker than the S8 Plus. All in all, the S8 is the absolute best built phone on the market right now. The curved glass on both the front and the back melt into the polished metal frame seamlessly smooth. The level of craftsmanship on the G6 is nowhere come close to that. The S8 is also backed with better software. With the latest and greatest processor, the S8 also kills the G6 in raw performance. With a camera and a display that are second to nothing, you won't be disappointed for getting an S8 Plus. On the other hand, the G6 feels solid and well-built in hands. The processor is indeed outdated, but you won't notice it in real-life multimedia consumption. The camera is also surprisingly great. With a decent display, you won't be disappointed neither. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Like it if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe. There are also two more videos here for you to watch next. See you next time.